Good morning. My name is Susan Lund, and I'm the speaker chair for the Dyna Morningside Rotary Club. And today, November 6, 2018, it is our intent to share our theme for the year at Rotary, which is Be the Inspiration. As a result, we are, for the first time, recording one of our speakers every week. We have a fantastic speaker and an opportunity to learn from someone in the community. And it is with great pleasure that I introduce to you our speaker today, who is Mark Hennepin. Mark Henneman is the chairman and CEO of Mars Power Incorporated, along with the lead manager of Mars and Power Growth Fund and the president of Mars and Power Funds Trust. And today he's going to speak to us about why Minnesota can work for investors. So please join me in giving Mark Henneman a warm Rotarian welcome. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for having me here today. It's always a thrill to speak to Rotarians, fellow Rotarians. Uh, I have to admit that my attendance in St. Paul isn't exactly exemplary. However, I will say that uh, when I do get to speak to Rotarians, we're, we're speaking from a common frame of reference, a, a common set of values. And uh, that's always a, a pleasant thing to come into and, and makes it a joy to speak to Rotarians. What I'd like to do today is, I, I could go on and on about Mars and Power. We've got a few uh, information pieces on your, your tables. If you'd like to learn more about the firm or our investment options, I, I encourage you to take a look at that, and also some white papers that go in depth about how we invest. But what I'm going to do is just kind of carve out part of what we do in our investment process, and uh, that's uh, investing in Minnesota. Now, Warren Buffett talks about investing in, in what you know, and we totally agree with that. As a matter of fact, we take it a step further. Invest in what you know that's less than an hour car drive away. And so what we do is we focus uh, not exclusively, but to a very great extent on companies that are based in Minnesota. Right now, the Mars and Power Growth Fund has 48% uh, of its holdings are companies that are based in Minnesota, another 15% in uh, the, uh, the surrounding five states and, and the rest of it outside of the area. And, and we really think that makes us unique, but it also is there for a reason. We're not doing it out of the goodness of our heart. We're doing it because we think we can do very well by investing in Minnesota. And what I'd like to do today is just convince you uh, it has worked in the past. I can show you that. You know, our reasoning for why we think that Minnesota has been a great place to invest and why it should continue to be that way. I've got a number of things that I want to talk about, just some, some factors that really I'd like to highlight. We've got a great diversity of companies here, a really a solid business environment, um, some important uh, infrastructure things to talk about in terms of access to capital. Uh, our workforce is, uh, is extremely important. We think very strong here and uh, also want to convince you about the importance of the University of Minnesota. Starting with the diversity of companies here, uh, we all know it, but uh, what this chart shows, it's a pie chart of the companies that are based in Minnesota in the S&P 500, and they cover almost all the important economic sectors uh, in the economy, with some uh, big exposures. Of course, healthcare, as, as you might expect, is, is a big one, and industrials, but also financials, consumer discretionary materials. And so that, that makes Minnesota very unique. You know, you go to most areas of the country, California, with its uh, intense focus on technology, Detroit and Michigan with its focus on the auto industry. We've got a diversity unlike really just about any other area in the nation and in the world. This is something I like to, to put up. Uh, this is going to you know, be something you're very familiar with, but when I'm in New York City, there's just kind of that, these are all in Minnesota. It's, you know, they're amazed. They're national brands and very famous, good, high-quality companies, and as we all know, based in Minnesota. And of course, this is just a small subset of what is based in Minnesota. The, the, the length is, is long and, uh, again, a very diverse group of very high-quality companies. This next group are companies that we can't invest in directly, but they really kind of form the mosaic of what makes Minnesota great, some very fine private companies. And, uh, you know, they, they help build a, a strong business climate here and also uh, some other long-tail advantages of having 
uh, you know, some very large and successful and quality companies here in our region. Industrial districts is something that we've talked about. Uh, it's, a, it's a term that's used in economics. You know, traditionally, they would talk about uh, a company town where one company dominates all the work that happens within that, uh, that town. That's transitioned to an economic region that is, uh, the region actually dominates a particular industry. And uh, Minnesota actually has a number of those. And uh, we think that they play a key role in making Minnesota an attractive place for, for businesses that we would ultimately want to invest in. The first one I would like to talk about is MedTech. And uh, the MedTech industry was born in Earl Bakken's garage uh, a number of years ago. Earl just passed away very recently, but that spawned Medtronic, his company, which then you know, caused other companies to be formed here. It's a long list of MedTech companies here. And uh, in really every way, shape, and form, this is the industrial district that leads the MedTech industry. St. Jude, which has recently been purchased by Abbott Labs Guidant, which uh, a while ago was purchased by Boston Scientific, are the three largest. But the infrastructure and the number of companies here in this region, and I think they're here because you know the leaders are here. It makes it a very important part of the Minnesota economy. Computers, it's interesting that uh, you don't really think of this area as being an industrial district, but it definitely was and continues to be an important part of the Minnesota economy. Uh, Engineering Research Associates is a spin-off that happened uh, a number of, uh, of uh, naval officers that were code breaking in World War II formed in this ERA company in, uh, in Minnesota uh, and tried to sell their services to the U.S. government to, to break codes for the Soviet Union. They went on to form some of the most important companies here in this region, Control Data and Cray. Seymour Cray was uh, one of the founders of Engineering Research Associates. If, You'd like to learn a little bit more about that history. Our white paper kind of goes into detail. But what's happened with computers, it's still technology is an important part of the economy here, not so much on the public company side. Uh, Cray still has a, a significant exposure. They're based uh, in Seattle, but have uh, a lot of operations at the Mall of America, and they're manufacturing in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. But just within the private sector, uh, technology remains an important part of our economy. Uh, food and agriculture is kind of where it all began, and, and we can really point to a lot of things about Minnesota that happened because of uh, food and ag. Well, Washburn Crosby Company, which we now all know as General Mills, is really a leader in that sense. And when I say that this is, it's an important part of setting what Minnesota is all about, I'm talking about agriculture here in general, where we've always grown a lot more crops and raised a lot more animals than we need to feed our population here. And so from a very early point, we recognize the importance of exporting. And of course, exporting 150 years ago meant uh, getting it to Wisconsin or Illinois. Of course, now uh, exporting means something very different. But I would say to you that Minnesota really has it in its DNA to export. And so Minnesota is an export leader in agriculture and every other product. And, and to a great extent, we think that comes from our roots in, in food and agriculture. Other important companies, Cargo, a private company, and Hormel, a very high-performing food company based in Austin, Minnesota. Minnesota has a very healthy business environment. I have a long list of statistics, a couple of them here that I point out. Uh, CNBC ranks us uh, highly for uh, uh, states to do business in, and uh, a top 10 best metro job markets. Uh, I've got you know, some older data here. I've got to update this, but I mean, it, the, the numbers still look very good with recent numbers here. But uh, you know, very good business environment in, in this region. Back to that export leader, uh, the, the, the numbers look really strong. Fourth for agriculture, 13 for tech, in the top half for manufactured goods. Access to capital. This is an important one, of course. Uh, capital is the grease that keeps the wheels running. And uh, Minnesota has. Uh, Excellent access to capital. Uh, third for number of banking institutions, we've got uh, uh, the attention of some very fine banks, Wells Fargo and U.S. Bank. We've also got kind of that mid-tier of uh, regional banks that provide a lot of uh, access to capital for growing firms. And then also, uh, uh, you know, on the smaller side, the, the local uh, community banks uh, that have been very strong. And you can look back 10 years ago during the financial crisis. The banks that are here perform quite a bit better than the average bank in the, the rest of the United States. And that was absolutely key. Minnesota really came through the crisis uh, 
better than most regions of the country or the world, and a lot of it had to do with the quality of the banks. And uh, venture capital were uh, certainly nothing like the coast, but if you look in the middle of the country, we uh, are really well served with venture capital that's invested in the Minneapolis-St. Paul region. Uh, very good infrastructure, uh, uh, natural gas costs. Uh, my favorite one here is uh, uh, number five for America's best airport. Now, I suppose everybody here has an opinion of MSP Airport, um, but the one thing that I think you'd have a hard time arguing with in terms of its quality is its location. It's a three-hour flight from everywhere. You know, think about if you're on the East Coast and flying to the West Coast, an all-day trip to, to get any business done. Minnesota, you, you can really, uh, to most anywhere, you know, especially since we continue to have excellent nonstop service, you can get in and, and get your meeting done and often can fly back the same day. That's really important. Just t the time wasted in traveling is, is dramatically less here. So, uh, you know, if, if nothing else, our airport is just excellent in terms of where it is in the middle of the United States. All right, now here is uh, education. There's nothing really more important, and Minnesota has been very strong here in education, and uh, it's something I think we need to keep our eyes on. Perhaps it's something you can think about as you step into the voting booth today. Education is, is really a clear advantage for us, and it really needs to stay that way if we want to keep our community the way it is. But the numbers do speak for themselves. Number one, nationally for ACT scores, uh, I think that continues now through 17, so that would be 11 years in a row. Uh, AP exam uh, scores, very high, uh, very high uh, uh, graduation rates in high school. And also uh, what we see here is that uh, the, the students that graduate from Minnesota schools, high schools, and colleges stay here. They, uh, they, they recognize the appeal of this area and, uh, and you know, want to stay here, and, and we, we need to provide them the opportunity to do that. All right, Minnesota's strong work ethic. You know, this is something that's hard to quantify, but I think everybody in this room knows what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, people that are in Minnesota, uh, for, for whatever reason it is, their background, or just being surrounded by other people that, you know, just want to, they just want to do a good job. They don't feel like the world owes them anything. Give me a shot. That's really what I hear from people that I'm interviewing for, for entry-level jobs out of college or out of high school. I just, let me show you what I can do for you as opposed to, you know, I've got this degree from this university or college that I'm sure you've heard of and, you know, therefore I've earned the right to have that job. I, I just, I think there's just a different sense around here about, uh, you know, what people want to do. They want to work hard. They want to achieve and, and help uh, make this region a, a, a great place. And then the statistics talk to that a little bit, but uh, really, you know, just kind of deep down, I think it's really, there. that's a big contributing factor to the success of this region. All right, a couple long tail advantages. I mentioned that the University of Minnesota is important and it's unique, and I'd like to make that argument right now. First of all, the University of Minnesota is a land-grant university. There are somewhere around 100 land-grant universities. These are institutions that were created in the mid-1800s. Congress, through its Morrill Act, granted land to the states for the purpose of creating uh, institutions of higher learning that would be focused on technology and agriculture and science and math. And the reason why Congress did this, this very, uh, you know, very thoughtful thing was that there's this new opportunity coming around, it's called the Industrial Revolution, and the United States needs to lead that, and we need to create an institution to prepare our nation for that. It's amazing, Congress, what, a, what a, a great decision it made. You know, one of the things that, you know, one of the greatest decisions ever, frankly, in terms of the value that it's created for our nation as a whole. So the University of Minnesota is a land-grant university. I think that all land-grant universities still, to some extent, recognize why they are here. It is to help industry to be successful and for the United States to win in a global marketplace. Number two is... Uh, uh, the University of Minnesota is very active on the research front, and there's a number of statistics that would suggest that. Certainly Nobel Prize winners through history, but also uh, a number of institutions that, that look at what the Minnesota does in terms of the National Science Foundation ranks us 15th overall in terms of research and number eight in terms of public universities, so very at the very high end of uh, universities in 
the nation. Um, so that's kind of a second thing, land-grant university, very focused on, on the research, all of which, you know, the vast majority anyways, is meant to help industry and particularly industry in this region. Now the third thing that makes the University of Minnesota absolutely unique is its location. Think about uh, some of the other uh, great campuses in this nation and think about where they are. And, uh, you know, the University of Wisconsin, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great university, Michigan, but they're kind of out and away from the commercial centers. The University of Minnesota is right in the heart of a very important commercial center, right between St. Paul and Minneapolis. Uh, our friends at Columbus, Ohio would maybe argue with me, but, but they're wrong. This is, uh, this is the big one, you know, right in Minneapolis and St. Paul. And so that's what we think makes the University of Minnesota unique in, in all the country and, frankly, all the world. And, uh, and we, we check that with the companies that we invest in. And w without question, in every single case, these companies will say, yeah, our association with the University of Minnesota is a key part of our success. There's a professor at the university, um, moving on to kind of the next long tail advantage, his name is Myron Shavern. He's about to write a book, I don't think it's out yet, it could be out any time today, but it talks about managerial human capital. And what he's talking about there is, um, uh, you know, we've got all these great uh, companies that are based here, a diverse set of companies, and uh, it's, uh, it's a virtuous uh, circle, so it, it kind of feeds on itself. And what he means by that is that uh, if a, a high-level executive is considering coming to Minnesota to one of our companies, uh, he or she will look at Minnesota and say, you know, if I come to General Mills and it doesn't work out well, you know, I could, I could then go to Cargill or Hormel. But what also happens then is, you know, if, it, if the food industry is uh, in trouble, I could then take it to 3M or United Healthcare. And so people that are considering coming to Minnesota for high-level jobs uh, view this as a lower risk place to go and uh, what then ends up happening, and that type of movement happens all the time. You have people moving of course from, from Hormel to General Mills and Cargill, but then when they move from uh, one industry to the other, best practices move with them. So we see this all the time for individual companies and new uh, efficiency improvements that they've done and ways that they've made their companies better in many cases they have come from outside of their own industry, so an industrial company that takes, you know, some material handling uh, technologies that it got from people that came from other companies in the region. It has uh, really created a unique culture and environment here where we see that cross-pollinization of spectacular ideas. And this is something we talk about all the time with the companies that we invest in, uh, and it is definitely happening, and we think is part of the, the secret sauce that makes Minnesota companies such high quality performers. All right, so um, I did make the statement that Minnesota's outperformed uh, the country as a whole. Let me uh, back that up. This is a 20-year chart of the S&P 500 that uh, ended just a month ago. It uh, looks a little different on the end right now. <laughs> and uh, the blue chart is the Piper Jaffray Minnesota Index. It's the, the 100 largest companies in Minnesota. Right now, there's uh, only about 85 public companies in Minnesota, but it's tracked the, the history uh, performance of the Minnesota companies and a little bit of an apples to orange uh, comparison there because uh, the blue line doesn't include dividends, so the gap would actually be quite a bit wider there versus the S&P 500. Um, just a, a small pitch here, the Mars and Power Growth Fund has actually outperformed both. We think that uh, you know some of the work that we do at at uh, you know, identifying the highest quality companies really pays off too. But the bottom line is Minnesota has been a great place to invest in the past. We think that it will continue to be a great place to invest and uh, those are our reasons. So with that, I am happy to, a couple minutes, is that right? A couple, couple questions perhaps if, if there are any. Please. So the question is uh, about a third of the portfolio is outside of our region and how do I select companies uh, outside of there? Well, typically what happens is 
you know, I mentioned that Minnesota is very diverse, but it doesn't cover everything. We're light in certain areas, such as energy and, and frankly, technology. And so typically when I'm investing outside of Minnesota or outside of the companies that are closest to me, it's to get access to, uh, to uh, types of uh, industries that we just don't have here. So examples of that would be Alphabet, the parent company for Google, and Microsoft, which are uh, owned by the Growth Fund. Uh, we've also got a position in Schlumberger, an energy uh, services company. We don't have much energy uh, com exposure here in Minnesota. So that's kind of the, w that's generally where we start. Occasionally we are invested in companies outside of Minnesota when uh, the company that uh, we owned was bought by a company outside. An example of that would be uh, St. Jude Medical, which was bought um, and, and you know, by a company in Chicago, but this was a company that, uh, that we were very comfortable with and actually liked even better once they did buy St. Jude. So, so we, we do make investments like that too, but thank you for the question. Please. So a, a lot of companies move around the country these days uh, driven by financial incentives in other states and cities. How, how are we doing in terms of our retention rate of companies? So the retention rate of companies, you know, every, every area is losing companies right now. There's just a, a loss of public companies. And Minnesota has really decided not to aggressively go after other companies with incentives. Uh, you know, there's a number of organizations, Greater MSP, and I think they do a very good job of selling the benefits of uh, being here. But you're right. I mean, you know, to, to land say an Amazon would require huge incentives and we weren't, we, we weren't playing. And uh, I think that's still the right decision. I think we're having success at bringing in uh, small and medium sized companies that hopefully ultimately will be larger companies. But you're right, to play that game, to, to win over these, these large companies that are moving, we're, we're not likely to be real successful because we don't you know, throw out the bucks.